What's up everybody? Pete here at Spawn Fly Fish. Today we're going to get a little silly on the Coho Kitty. That's right, the Coho Kitty. We're taking the bunny leech, adding some HGH, a little Anabol 2000, and we're going to get a killer fly at the end. In the vise, SA280 size 1 from A-Rex. And let's just jump into this. Oh, before we start, we've got to do something with this. So for our tail, I've got some Magnum Rabbit, and this is Tiger Bard Hot Pink Brown over Peach. And you'll see why that's important here in a second. And now I'm going to take my ever useful bodkin. What I'm going to do is poke a hole right where the last of those fibers meet the leather there. I'm going to do it from the bottom and come up through the top is my goal. Like so. And why we do that is so we can take this hook, run it through that hole we made in the bottom, and hopefully this is somewhat centered. I hope you guys can see a little bit of this anyway. Uh, now you see that poking through, and just continue running that hook up. So now our leather for our tail is pierced onto that hook. And this will provide just a little bit more strength and we don't have to do anything goofy to keep this on. All right, so now let's get some thread going. Just some Vivas fluorescent hot pink 140, like so. All right, so this tail is pre-measured, and you saw that little section that we pierced, so I cleaned the rabbit fur off of that. What I'm looking for as far as this length of this tail is roughly a body length, and you can see that's quite a bit bigger than what this hook is, which means you got it. We're going articulated on this guy. All right, so get that thing tied in there. Really tight down. We are feeding this to some hungry, angry fish, and they're going to abuse this, and that's okay. So next little deal here, Alaskan Fuchsia Crystal Flash. I'm going to take about 10 fibers. I really want some, some bling on this one. And let's see here. All I'm going to do is, you know, put some flash on either side of this tail. And I'm looking for the flash to reach the end of the tail roughly. If it's not perfect, it's okay. It's flash. It's meant to grab attention. So I've got that tied in on my side. And now I'll come to your side, and we'll hopefully do the same. So at this point, I've come back up. I'm going to get one advanced thread in front of that flash, and then just feed it down onto your side. And now we're blinged. There's your verb for the day. So now I'm going to angle cut some of these fibers of flash. Probably a little bit difficult to see, but we're there. In the spirit of keeping an even underbody, run that thread up just a little more than you think you have to. All right, now we're back to our previous tie-in point. Next element, you got it. And this is Spawn's Fluorescent Peach Crosscut. I'm going to turn this hook back over so I've got a little bit easier time tying this in. So as you can see, I've trimmed the hair off the last quarter inch. And as far as how do I know if my cross cut's facing the right direction, when you tie this in, you want the leather facing up with all the fibers facing back. And before you get started, this is my left hand. If I place the rabbit strip in my left hand with the leather facing me, all those hairs point toward my thumb. That's the correct orientation. So now, again, leather facing up, hair flowing back, and that's what we want. Really get a clean tie in here and cinch all that leather down. This is key here. Make sure this is strong. You could always throw in a little cement or, or some glue and that'd be all right too. All right, and one other thing before we get too crazy here. 
dip your fingers in some water and run it down the length of this rabbit before you tie it in and you'll get rid of all those loose fibers that just cause you frustration later and want to come out anyway. Get them out now. It makes it a lot easier for you on the vise. Less hair flying around as you tie. All right. As we wrap this forward, notice that the leather is going to be touching the previous wrap. So that's, we don't need to guess at gaps in there or anything else. It's just touching wraps. All right. I'm going to finish off right about there. Make a nice V in there for me to follow with that thread. That's well, pretty good right there. Let's tie the sucker down. Got one good wrap, two good wraps, and I can let go. And three, one more for good measure, four wraps. I'm going to pull this back just so I can get a couple clean wraps of thread in front of that leather strip before trimming it out. Boom. Nothing to it, folks. All right. So now there's one little tuft of hair right there I could do without. There we go. And I do have a little container of water here that I'm tying with. And so before I try to whip finish this, I'm just going to brush my fingers with a little bit of water and then brush that onto the rabbit. And now it's under control. It's not wisping around. And I can really concentrate on getting the rest of this leather tied down and making a very neat thread head here. And there we go. Let's whip finish. Go one, two, three, and four. I'll do it once more. Boom. All right, trim that tag thread out. And for cement today, like I usually do, I'm using some Loon Hardhead Clear. I actually got a new bottle. Pretty excited about that. And a nice even coat on all these thread wraps. You just put all that effort into making a nice clean head. Make sure you preserve it with a little cement. And there we go. So, there's our tail for this articulated coho kitty. And typically, go ahead and let that cement dry. I'm going to cheat it a little bit and just keep going for you guys. So our next element, I've got a spawn 30 millimeter, 60 degree jig shank. And on that shank, I've got the Spawn Football Bead 7.5 millimeter. And this, of course, hot pink. So make our connection, pop this out of the vise. Now we'll just transition and put the shank into the vise. Now, how do we control this? Well, a bunch of different ways. Material clip is great, all that. Rubber band around the post holds that hook. All right, so now to keep this bead in position, and of course I'm a pretty, pretty much a stickler for an, an even underbody. Got some non-lead .020 weighted wire, so let me turn this guy back over. And by all means, you don't need to wrap this entire thing, but again, it makes my OCD happy to have that underbody even at every step so that when we wrap the rabbit strip on here for the body, everything looks right. No goofiness. I'm going to go ahead and trim this front portion here. As always, curved scissor dedicated for my wire. And let me bend that over. And now, slick that right into the back side of this bead. And like we always mention with these beads, the bulk of that, that bead meat if you will, needs to be on the bottom or outside of that shank. And that's what's going to keep this fly riding hook point up. All right. Now I'm looking at where that arm's going to come down. And I could probably sneak in one more wrap. Let me see here. Yep, that's about it. And again, cut this back piece of wire, round it over, and we're ready to tie down. So to tie this down at this point, I'm just going to get my thread started here in the back, underneath the arm for a wrap, and then just start tying it down. And look at that, it's going to meet up right with the back of our weighted wire wraps. I'm going to trim this thread out, 
and then we'll get all these wire wraps covered. So, angle 45 degree. Boom, 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 boom. Work your way up this point, switch it, and go reverse 45 degree angle. Now I'm left with a series of X wraps. Perfect, because we're going to do that one more time. And now you can see as we wrap our thorough wraps, that's going to pull all these thread wraps in between those weighted wire wraps. And guess what? Nothing spins, nothing moves, sturdy. Make sure that head's where I want it before I get too tied down there. And a couple more thread wraps and that bead's not going anywhere anymore. Perfect. All right, so here's my second pass of 45 degree wraps. And now let's just hammer all those down. Boom, boom, boom. Straight through the wraps, pulling all those X's in between that wire. Strength, strength. All right, nothing to it. And we're back, everything is cinched down. So at this point, I do want some more flash in there. So let's go ahead and grab another eight to 10 strands. And again, Alaskan fuchsia, crystal flash. So we're gonna tie this the same way we tied that last flash, which is to mean on the side. And as far as a length, I'm looking at this to reach halfway back on the tail. getting there boom I like that and the same I'm gonna come up to where we tied it in I'm gonna hold my crystal flash up get a wrap in front pull it over to your side and then begin to wrap down on the side now all I have to do is trim it and get it to match up with the fibers on my side which again I'm looking at halfway up that tail and there we go Pretty simple, just looks tricky. Take your time, no worries. All right, so now we're back to the peach rabbit and I'm gonna create a clean little starting spot again just to make that tie in a little bit easier on me. So there's my clean off, remove some fibers there at the end, put it exactly where the fibers start there and then make sure the leather's looking up tie it in. Don't be shy on thread wraps. Really, really nail this hide down so that there's no worries about it coming out. And then just wrap. Touching wraps once again. Not much to it. We're going to go to, I'd say right about there. We do have some, some other things we're going to toss in here. So I'm going to flip this over and tie this one off on the bottom. But again, we've got this bowl of water here. Let's use it. So let's get these fibers matted down and then make a clean separation here. I'll show you what I'm looking at. My V for where I want that thread to go. Just like that. And transfer. Pull down and now really hammer that down with three, four good wraps. Pull back, get that thread in front, and we can trim out the hide. Try to keep that one clean. Otherwise, with this leftover leather in there, you can really bulk up a tie off. And that's, we don't want to do that. All right, so now finish tying that down. Looking good so far. I'm happy with this. This is going to be nasty. And yep, one more time. We're going to go in with just a little bit of flash again. Tie it the same, both sides. Nothing crazy. Uh, maybe this time I'm going to go, let's say, six to eight uh, pieces of flash. And for this one, I want it to reach halfway back on our previous tie in a flash. Thereabouts. Does it have to be exactly half? Nope. You do what makes you happy in your tying. Like so. Again, pull this back, one wrap in front, pull the flash over, and you can do this same technique with legs. 
whatever it is that you're tying on either side. And once again, trimming these fibers all to sit roughly halfway back on our previous tied in flash, like so. This thing is getting some kind of gnarly. And that's what we like. We like gnarly flies. All right, just to make this one stick out and be a little bit special here, we've got some grizzly peach. And this is actually off of a cape. So don't get mad at me for using some dryish type feathers for a streamer. It's effective. All right, so now you can see I'm, I'm putting a topper on this guy or dorsal, whatever you want to call it. And what I want is for that to reach almost to the very tippy tip end of that tail, but not quite. So once I've got that, I want you to watch here. I'm just going to separate those fibers, pinch it. And now I'm going to go off camera, trim the butts that really make this tough to stick together. And then I'm going to just cut off the top two thirds on both sides so that this is my little toothbrush of fibers here. And why I'm doing that is so that when I run the thread up through there, there's a lot for that to grab onto. And those fibers are actually going to help stabilize the base of that quill so that as I want to tie this in, I can move it exactly where I want and then tie it down. And those act as little cheaters, those fibers. So now what I've got are back-to-back -back feathers, curvature going down at the back, and they're just going to sit one on either side of the hook, like so. And when that's in the water, that's really going to move, and it's a very enticing movement for fish, and we like it. So as far as adding triggers, I'm all about it. As many as I can put in a fly, I will. Is it overkill? Maybe. Does it catch fish? Absolutely. All right, get that trimmed up. Now just like any other element we add, clean it up. And we're ready for our next one. So, perfect round rubber legs. Again, fuchsia, we are going for a lot of movement. And what's a coho kitty without some whiskers? So I'm going five legs here. And instead of, you know, typically I'll wrap this around the thread and bring it up. Today we're going to wrap or tie this in just like we did with the flash. And so I'll go on one side here. I'm going to match up the length of our previous flash. So it's not going to really interrupt the hook point as much as you think and uh, right about there looks good and remember this is you know five round rubber legs bulk up pretty quickly so be mindful of your spacing and really take your time get that tied in exactly where you want it to be and there we go so now i'm again pull those legs back one wrap over and now pull the legs over. And this is a little mushy, but that's to our advantage. And on the side, I've got those five legs. And now you see how bulky that's getting behind the bead, but not to worry. And let's go ahead and trim those legs out. And if they're not exact, we can clean those up later if we want. But this thing is getting pretty buggy lots of movement lots of color and let's get these rubber legs tied down just a little more not a ton all right i can live with that so our last addition here i've got two marabou feathers one fuchsia one spawn fluorescent peach but take a look closely i've removed one half of the feather and again, as I tie this in by the tip, you can see if I have the convex side facing up, which is the top, when I start to wrap, all those fibers are gonna come off, but I don't want all of the feather. I just want roughly half those fibers. So remove the half you don't need. I've done that to both of these feathers. I'm going to stack them now. I've cleaned off the tip where we tie it in. I'm just going to gently brush these fibers down to the base of the quills and then we can tie them in. Trim up a couple more of these fibers here. All right. Let's get 
these in here. We're almost done, folks. Thanks for sticking with us. All right. And these tips here are not real noticeable, but that would drive me bonkers. So let's get rid of them. And then we'll just tie down, make a neat tie-in, and we can wrap our little accent feathers here. So same time, pull them both up. Make sure they're all the fibers rushing toward the back here. Oh, got one that's bent. There we go. Patience is key on on these kind of movements and and tie-ins. All right. So now we can wrap both these feathers together, making sure those fibers stay toward the back, facing the back, each wrap. And what you'll see here is I'm going to get some pink showing through the peach and some peach showing through the pink. Pretty good deal. Couple big wraps here and we'll just tie off right here on the bottom underneath. Separate those fibers. It's a little tricky with all these movements. So again, got that bowl of water. Let's use it. Get these fibers just a little bit wet and matted and then they should kind of stay out of the way a little just long enough for us to get a clean tie off that's all i'm looking for there we go and there's one pull down and two now i can release my tying hand really get those out of the way make sure you hammer this down five six good wraps pull these back one two oh trapped one get that out of there there we go and now we can clean, cleanly cut these tag ends out. And let's see how we're looking. I don't need those two, so they're gone. And now, before we really hammer this down and, and whip finish, I've got the mini comb here, a Stomfo comb. I'm just going to brush these out a little bit to make sure that my layering of those two feathers is, is pretty even. And there we go. At this point, just continue like we always do, a neat thread head or thread neck behind this bead. And we are ready to whip finish. There's one whip finish, pull it back, make sure that's nice and tight. This thing's gonna take some abuse here in the next few weeks, hopefully, so tie it as strongly as you can. Trim out that thread, and you guessed it, it's time for a little cement and call this fly done. I really hope you guys enjoyed this fly. I love fishing this style fly. Uh, it's, it's kind of fun to show your friends too because they'll They'll think you've really been putting in some work on the vise. It looks nice and it produces fish I don't know if it gets any better than that Maybe if you could find a, a fly that could do your dishes outside of that I'll Take this every day Alrighty, and there we go That's a lot of glue that's gonna have to sink in there, but we've got the coho kitty a big variation on a bunny leech. Lots of movement, lots of color, lots of flash. Thanks everybody for watching. If you enjoyed this, please remember to hit like and subscribe. And we will see you guys on the water.